Suppose we've got an n by n system of these linear differential equations. That is to say, n equations and n variables. To solve such a system, we look at the eigenvalues of an n by n matrix. If we have n different eigenvalues, we are golden. Each eigenvalue has an eigenvector. Those will give us n different solutions. We'll put them together and create a general solution. What if we don't? That is to say, what if we have a fewer than n eigenvalues? Well, that might be a problem or it might not. In this video, we'll look at the not case. And we'll approach this via example. This system of differential equations is clearly a little silly. I mean, I've written it as a system, but the equations don't interact. Our x1s are all up here, our x2s are all down here. And nevertheless, let's approach this using the techniques of this section. We will rewrite this in terms of matrices. We will find the eigenvalues of this matrix. We do that by setting the determinant of this matrix minus lambda equal to zero. For a two by two matrix, the determinant is easy to find. We multiply the diagonal elements and the anti-diagonal elements and subtract them. There's the product of the diagonal elements. The product of the anti-diagonal elements is zero. And we get a single eigenvalue. So it's a two by two matrix, but it only has one eigenvalue. Rather than despair, let's forge ahead with the method that's worked before. Let's look at the eigenvectors of this eigenvalue. We do that by solving this equation. Well, a minus 2i. turns out to be the zero matrix though. So we're solving this matrix equation and we don't even need to go to our calculator and use the RREF command. Any V works um, with the one minor exception that zero is never an eigenvector. So let's select two. Linearly independent eigen vectors. There are an infinite number of choices because every vector except for zero is an eigenvector. 
maybe we select one zero and zero one. Linearly independent eigenvectors give linearly independent solutions. That's an important thing to know. So the solutions one, zero, e to the two t, and the solution zero, one, e to the two t, are linearly independent. Since we have two linearly independent solutions, we can form a general solution. And we are done. And the fact that we only had one eigenvalue didn't cause us any trouble at all. We still found two linearly independent eigenvectors, which gave us two linearly independent solutions, and we used them to create a general solution. So that's one case, that's the nice case. You might have fewer than n eigenvalues and everything works out nicely anyway. There's another case though, um, we'll put that off as its own video. The nasty case where things don't work out so smoothly.